Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we'll be talking about the Alien Tech muzzle and how it's been done real dirty. So the situation for those of you that didn't watch my video about it on the 26th of April is that a new muzzle device was added to the game called the AR-15 Alien Tech. This came with minus 19% recoil reduction, which is pretty cracked as a standalone part, but suppressor combinations can come to more than this, like the Seika ASR suppressor and its associated break, which is the lowest recoil combination at 23% for 556 weapons, which is 4% more than the Alien Tech. This meant that on its own it can't reach the lowest levels of recoil anyway when used with builds like the suppressors can and for most 556 guns this ensured that loud builds were still inferior due to higher recoil and obviously the noise they make. However the Alien Tech did come in 5% better than the Bullet Tech which was the previous best loud muzzle break. There is however one special build that allows you to combo up loud muzzles like the Alien Tech and the Bullet Tech with more recoil reduction which is using the jailbreak attachment. It's only compatible with the M4, it requires the most expensive handguard, it doesn't allow the use of the the two longest barrels and is seriously out of the meta right now. Simply attaching the jailbreak to your weapon increases the gassiness, let's call it, to such an extent that on full auto with regular sights it makes it really hard to see your target. Yes, this can be mitigated somewhat by using high up scopes or mounts, whatever, right? The point here is that there are lots of downsides to the jailbreak build to the extent that they are pretty much never used. So this new alien tech guy with 5% extra recoil reduction over its predecessor when buddied up with the jailbreak could in fact achieve a new lowest recoil build of 20 on the M4 only which was 3 better than the previous best suppressed build of 23, which incidentally is the Seika version. This new muzzle was slipped into a patch recently and I was given a heads up by my community to check it out, which I did, and confirmed what we just said about the new lowest recoil build. Naturally I made a video about this because it's exciting to find a new part that allows something novel to be created and you never know if there'll be some merit in these odd non-meta builds, it's fun to do and it's one of the reasons why we like this game. So the video goes out, some people want to check it out, the price spikes from 60k to 200 k temporarily because it's a find and raid only item and there aren't that many of them and then 24 hours later Bang! The Alien Tech gets slapped with a massive nerf from minus 19% recoil to minus 11%, squarely securing it into the absolutely useless territory. In fact, there is already a 556 muzzle break with minus 11% recoil and almost identical stats, called the HK Blitz. Do you recognise this one? Well me neither, because why would anybody ever use this? Even the most basic muzzle break and suppressor combination outperforms it now. Naturally, the Alien Tech is now on the flea market for under 10k, because it's a throwaway part that has virtually zero value. As you can probably tell, I'm pretty upset about this decision. The Alien Tech itself really doesn't matter. This isn't the point, because it's the principle around the rebalancing that I just cannot understand. Breaking it down into the obvious points, the Alien Tech jailbreak build is only relevant on the M4 because it is the only weapon that can use the jailbreak. On every other compatible gun, suppressor combinations already performed better. Secondly, virtually nobody uses the meta loud M4 builds because why would you? They are worse in almost every way other than ergonomics and maybe price, although the jailbreak and the bullet tech together cost you about 30k so it's not even like it's that inexpensive. With the alien tech being find in raid only it wasn't going to come cheap from the flea market with its old stats so surely being find in raid only it should be better than the bullet tech. Perhaps minus 19% was too much and if it was tuned down to minus 16, 15 or something like that it would still have been better than the muzzle that you can literally buy from Peacekeeper. Some people say in response to these kind of things well the game is not the full version yet it's a waste of time then balancing everything now because things are going to change and while I get that sentiment in some ways, if that was the case then why did this specific attachment get changed anyway? How come it wasn't then left in its original state for three months before finally getting rebalanced? Somebody is clearly looking at these things and deciding what to nerf and deciding what to buff. Plus we've just seen some of the biggest, most wide reaching recoil, movement and weapon rebalances since patch 12.12 was launched, so it isn't true that this doesn't or shouldn't happen in the game. But the thing is, the alien tech situation isn't the first time that we've seen stuff like this. The most obvious example comes to mind when various parts were rebalanced quite a long time ago now. I can't even remember exactly which patch it was, but items like pistol grips, vertical foregrips, and most importantly for this example, stocks were adjusted on their recoil and ergonomics values to switch up the existing meta because everyone was using the same things. Prior to this, the Magpul CTR stock was one of the best all around stocks out there when looking at recoil and ergo together. However, as a find in raid only item, you had to get it through the flea market and as such, the price was relatively high. Alternatively, you could buy the MOE Carbine Plus butt pad from the traders which was close to it but came out to something like 1% less recoil overall. 
Those looking to make bleeding edge meta builds had to pay up for the pricey components on the fleet that had a touch extra recoil reduction or a touch extra ergo. When the attachments got changed though, the MOE carbine ended up coming out on top of the CTR. But not just that, it came out on top of basically everything, barring the PRS Gen 3 stock, which has far less ergonomics. My suspicion to this day is that stocks were rebalanced using their basic stats, and it was forgotten about that a butt pad could be attached on top. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but this is another case of the find and raid item is worse than the one that you can buy, which makes no sense from a game balance perspective. Another example is the Bastion rail cover for AKs. This used to be worse than the Fab Defense PDC dust cover, but now the Bastion is one more ergo than the Fab, despite being around one third of the price, and it's available at Skier 1. Why would anybody use the fab cover with the stats the way they are? Even more recently, we had the turn rate penalties reduced on helmets, armor, and armored rigs, which I had wanted for ages. Why they didn't set these to zero, I'm really not sure. But if you look at the extra components like face shields or attachments like the Aventail for the LSH2 DTM, these are still at the original values. That one has minus 15% turn rate, for example. Were the armor and weapons rebalanced forgetting about the auxiliary items? Well, probably, I'll leave that for you to decide. Other than this turn rate thing, all of these other ones that I just talked about were changed ages ago and are still in the game at the moment. None of these individually really matter in the grand scheme of things, but I simply cannot understand the thought process behind them if the changes were actually intentional. And if these outcomes of the changes weren't intentional, then we really need the way that these things get looked at to be done in a broader and more considered way. Tarkov is an extremely complicated game, and when changes are made, there are often tangential items that also need looking at in the case of helmets and their auxiliary parts, as well as the side effects of changing crafts, trader levels, flea market access, etc, etc. It's very difficult for any one person, or even a small group of people, to propose a change and get it completely right, thinking of everything that might be affected, and I suppose that is also what this testing period is for and to see the community's response. But I just feel that the results that we can see from our side of the fence as players is currently too ad hoc and doesn't get adjusted often enough, and those changes that are made sometimes simply don't seem to make any sense. So yes, I'm being pretty unusually damning in this video, but it comes from a place of love. I want this game to be the best that it can be, and it's frustrating to see odd balancing choices slip into what could be the greatest FPS of all time. Of course, along with all the other stuff that we've been waiting for that hopefully is coming soon on the BSG roadmap that they released the other day. So with that, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons, and as always, have fun in your raids.